highlight again guys I never thought I'd make a video this soon but um, my friend sent me a video of which I started watching and I found it quite funny um, as I go out street preaching I do speak to some Muslims and I ask them about what Muhammad means and uh, you know they talk to me about its meaning some Muslims tell me it's the direct meaning of the name because every name has a meaning uh, even though it has mad in the name Mu Ham Mad it's got Ham in it as well but they tell me it means um, let me just get the meaning okay so you've got Hamid to praise um, Mo Hamid praise worthy okay so I believe that's the uh, sort of root meaning of the name although some Muslims tell me that it means all things it means everything apparently um, this is I'm not you know I'm not slagging anyone off or anything but I've just heard some really really wonderful stories um, that Muhammad means everything so it's pretty it seems to mean praiseworthy in Arabic and to praise okay a little bit like King David worshipped God seven times a day Muhammad apparently prayed three is it three or five times a day prayed he was not n noted for praying um, I'm not sure if he was noted for actually singing and doing Psalms because in Islam you're not meant to sing and so even though um, praising God is very much uh, likened to singing because that's why we have music music comes from heaven because all the angels praise God but apparently in Islam they don't actually sing anything they sing prayers I've certainly heard them do that so the the latest claim that I've heard is that Isaiah 42 is speaking about Muhammad so let's just examine this <clears throat> um, this is going from the King James Bible easy to read version here is my servant the one I support the one I support I don't know if this is akin to the Quran but in the New Testament um, there is only one Messiah in the Quran also there is only one Messiah and that's Isa that's Jesus Christ and so I definitely have to take the counsel according to the Quran that this could be very well talking about the most important servant in the Quran who is Jesus Christ Jesus himself says I came to serve and not to be served he is known as the servant king Jesus Christ Muhammad um, basically came to be served he had the hierarchy uh, he was at the top it was very much a pyramid structure of, of that hierarchy where um, his, his men really served him he gave out the orders he served him and everything was done through the chief who was Muhammad on the other hand Jesus came to heal he came to shed light um, and truth into people's lives to truly show how a servant of God should act and so I definitely would argue that this means Jesus and not Muhammad the next verse he is the one I have chosen and I am very pleased with him and so when Jesus was baptized a voice came out of heaven and said behold this is my son listen to him in him I am well pleased and so to my mind uh, this prophecy in Isaiah 42 speaking about Jesus um, I have no recollection of anything in the Quran that talks about God being very pleased with Muhammad in fact Muhammad even admits his sin in the Quran okay this is a, I believe is from an Islamic website does the Quran refer to Muhammad's sins uh, response we have a, a few surahs here and uh, obviously the heavy texts is Muhammad's own words uh, surah 47 19 there is, there is no Allah to save and ask forgiveness for thy sin and for believing men and believing women 
um, he, he says, May forgive thee of thy sin, uh, that which is past and that which is to come. And so he is inquiring of God um, about the forgiveness of his sin. He's actually admitting that he's sinned. Um, there's no confession of faith in Jesus Christ for the remission of his sin. Um, you know, admission of sin, you know, you hear about the sinner's prayer. The first step is to admit that you're a sinner. And so, yes, it seems Muhammad took that first step of um, reconciling his soul to, to God. But uh, the Quran doesn't teach that um, it's through the shed blood of the Lamb, it's through Jesus Christ that we are our sins are remitted and uh, that God no longer looks upon us as sinners but as saints. There's no confession from Muhammad about Jesus dying for his sin. But he does admit that he has sinned, so at least it's something. Um, there's various surahs here that you can check out. Al-Bukhari, I think, uh, is, is actually is actually the translation I normally use, and so um, he he is uh, he was an early imam. It goes quite far back, and he wrote, wrote commentaries on the Quran. I do think he was quite a, a, a good um, commentator on the Quran. So let's move on to the next verse in Isaiah forty-two. I have filled him with my spirit, and he will bring justice to the nations. Now this verse from the Quran is from Surah 4, 169. It's talking about the Spirit of God and also referring to the Messiah. So you can go to Surah 4, 169. It says the Messiah, Isa or Jesus, son of Mary, God's messenger and his word that he committed to Mary and a spirit from him. So referring to the, the spirit which uh, which came from the Father, which was in Mary. And this very much backs up the, the New Testament. Very much backs up the New Testament. There might be some verses that you might try to use to support that this could be Muhammad. Uh, but as far as bringing justice to the nations goes, I definitely like an explanation to that. Um, w me as a Christian, I believe that Jesus will bring justice to the nations at his second coming. At the moment, we have to preach the gospel about the remission of sin, forgiveness through the blood of the Lamb. We have to preach the gospel. Um, but the Lord... Yeshua, Jesus Christ, will bring justice to the nations at his second coming. He will bring, he will bring um, judgment to the nations. It says he will not cry out or shout or try to make himself heard in the streets. Now, I know that in parts of the Quran and in certain occasion um, it was known for Muhammad to make certain war cries before he was ransacking a village or a town. Um, it's fairly well known. As far as I understand, um, Jesus very rarely lifted his voice in the streets. You know, when he spoke, he spoke with absolute authority and power. He didn't have to shout, but just the very essence of his being and the way he spoke um, resonated um, and very very far an occasion you know when he did preach at the temple the very acoustics of the the temple and uh, you know the grass verges where in, you read in Matthew 5 where he preached um, the Beatitudes you know I've been there and you don't really have to raise your voice that much and so this is not like Jonah you know the ministry of Jonah where he really shouted to the Ninevites to repent that God is going to destroy uh, their city unless they repent in 40 days. Christ's ministry was sort of really going through very, very gracefully the towns and villages which uh, the Jews stayed in 
and re basically revealing himself through the Spirit of God as the Messiah, as the Bible teaches, and I believe as the Quran also states as well. <clears throat> um, he will not break even a crushed reed. He will not put out even the weakest flame. He will bring true justice. So he will not break a crushed reed. We know that Jesus Christ never harmed anyone. Even when he took uh, the bull whip into the temple, it seemed that he, he, he just uh, overturned the tables. He set a lot of animals free. So I know a lot of um, social justice warriors and anim animal activists should really love that about Jesus, but the point is they shouldn't have been selling anything in the temple. And uh, Jesus was just clearing it out because they had made it into a, a den of thieves, as he said. You know, they were just uh, using it for usury to make money and God's house was not was not for that uh, we know that Muhammad did um, kill um, you can use the word murder if you want but he certainly killed uh, men and women and children and he took a lot of, of captives as well to be concubines and so um, Jesus didn't do this he says not even break a crushed reed and so this cannot be speaking about Muhammad here in this verse. There's no way, there's no way you can argue that this is Muhammad. You will not even put out the weakest flame. This is talking um, about someone's spirit. This is talking about quenching someone's faith in God. So someone with a very weak faith, like Jesus isn't going to come and slap him around. But in, in Muhammad's case, he was literally doing that. He was literally coming into towns and villages and saying, look, um, unless you serve me, you know, you're going to die. Um, and so he did more than put out the weakest flame. He, he, he literally um, gave people the option to serve him or die. That, that was basically what he was preaching. As for bringing true justice... Um, some someone would have to explain this verse to me how Muhammad brought true justice to humanity. How did he achieve this? I'm quite interested to know this. You know, there's a lot of um, apologists that will attack, you know, the word of God and say, well, how did Jesus bring this? Well, again, um, there is a, such a thing as poetic justice, but I believe... Yes, just as the Quran says, just as the Bible says, that Jesus will come and judge the earth. And so we should be very aware of that. He will not grow weak or give up until he has brought justice to the world. And people in faraway places will hope to receive his teachings. Okay, so you could argue both the Bible and the Quran has reached very, very far parts of the world. How it's affected lives is a whole different matter, a whole different story perhaps. Um, depending if you're a man or a woman or whatever you know it could have varied stories about that the Lord is ruler and maker of the world uh, the Lord the true God said these things he created the sky spread it out over the earth he formed the earth and everything in it uh, produced he breathes life into all the people of the earth he gives a spirit to everyone <clears throat> who walks on the earth okay so that's God who did that? Hallelujah. I, the Lord, was right to call you. I will hold your hand and protect you. Well, that's what God did, obviously. Um, Jesus walked without any weapons um, whatsoever. He could have been attacked at any point in his ministry. He didn't retaliate um, when he told his disciples that he was going to lay his life down. The Son of Man was going to um, be um, basically hung up on a cross you know at that point Peter tried to physically protect Jesus but you know again uh, Peter wasn't thinking the way the way he was and at that point he'd submitted his um, life for a ransom for sin but up until that point it was noted that um, he was able to evade any attacks on his life without using any weapons or retaliation, which itself is amazing if you think about that. 
You will be the sign of my agreement with the people. You will be a light for other nations. So we're at the the correct festival for that, the Feast of Lights. If you read John 10, Jesus Christ is indeed the light of the world and he fulfilled that Jewish festival. There's nothing to suggest that Muhammad is the light of the world or the light of the nations. You'll make the blind able to see. You will free those who are held as captives. Now, even in the Quran, Jesus did miracles. In the New Testament, he he, he indeed made blind people see, but also spiritually blind people. He also made them see as well. Um, there's no such miracles attached to Muhammad's ministry, as far as I'm aware. Uh, maybe I lack education in that department, but uh, Muhammad didn't do any physical miracles, spiritual ones. No, he, he didn't. He didn't do that, but Jesus did. Free those who are held captives. Did Muhammad <clears throat> free any slaves? I understand that Islam is the biggest uh, slave owner religion in the world at the moment. Um in the East and in the Middle East um, they do have many many slaves, they'll have many slaves who serve them in their houses and in their businesses and it's even known in the, I believe it's Saudi Arabia that if you're black you're, you, you're, just, you're just referred to as a slave if you don't believe me, type it in Google go, go and visit Saudi Arabia and see if I'm speaking the truth in the West um, we have equality now we have equality now um, we will finish with all that nonsense um, but sadly it's Islam which is still in the Middle Ages with regards to referring to human beings as slaves now perhaps um, modern Islam is a, is a perversion of what Muhammad taught but I understand that Muhammad also had slaves also had um, many slaves who served him again he didn't really come to serve he came to be served Muhammad you will lead those who live in darkness out of their prison if this is speaking spiritually I'd love an example about Muhammad coming in um, like as a resurrected messiah and um you know, speaking freedom as he did to the apostles that they were in the jails and, uh, you know, Jesus came in and the chains fell off their their ankles and their hands and they walked out the prison, walked through doors, walked through walls. That's what Jesus did for his followers. I'm not certain um, what stories or what Muhammad did. I am Yahweh, that is my name. Again, the Quran does not state this. Um, Muhammad didn't state that Yahweh is the God and the creator of the universe you know the father of Jesus Christ um, the God of Israel he did name a, a different God uh, it's arguably Eloah in the Hebrew but the, again this is not the name of God it's simply a um, title of God you know here we see it um, just referring to the name Elohim it just means God it's not an actual name for the creator it says here I will not give my glory to another I will not let stat statutes um, or is that yeah statutes take their praise that should be mine or it says statues sorry I'm not reading that correctly so that's like idols um, in the past, I told you what would happen, and it happened. Now I'm telling you something new, and I'm telling you now before it happens. So that's known as prophecy. I'm not sure if Muhammad prophesied about anything, but again, comments below, man. A song of praise to the Lord. A song means that you sing. In Islam, you, you don't have any music. You're not allowed to have any instruments. Um, in the Bible, when you're praising God, yes, you are allowed some accompanying instruments to sing praises to God. Sing a new song to the Lord. Praise Him everywhere on the earth. All you who sail on the seas, everything in the sea, and all you people in faraway places, 
deserts and cities, villages of Kedar, praise the Lord. People living in Selah, sing for joy, sing from the top of your mountain. Give glory to the Lord, praise him, all you people in faraway islands. You know, this is not talking about hell song either, but yes, it's talking about praising God. The Lord will go out like a strong soldier, like a man going into battle. He will be full of excitement. He will shout with a loud cry and he will defeat his enemies. Ah, well, arguably, oh, could this be speaking about Muhammad, I wonder? I'm not sure. Could it be? Or could it be speaking about the second coming of Jesus Christ? Uh, we have to. That, that's a point. You, you could argue that one. God is very patient. For a long time I have said nothing. I have controlled myself and kept quiet. But now I will cry out like a woman giving birth. My breath is getting faster and louder. I will destroy the hills and the mountains. I will dry up all the plants that grow there. I will change rivers to dry land. I will dry up pools of water. Then I will lead the blind along the path that they never knew to places where they have never been before. I will change darkness into light for them. I will make the rough ground smooth. I will do things for them. I will not abandon my people, but some of them have left me. They say to their gold statues, you are my gods. They trust their false gods, but they will be disappointed and ashamed. Yes, there's certainly a lot of statues within Christianity, within Mormonism, um, Catholicism. There's actually, there's actually golden statues. You, you, you could actually argue that this golden statue in this instance could refer to uh, Moroni, which is a, which is a, an idol of the Mormon, uh, not Moron, Mormon Church. Or the Mermin Church. Um, so you have to look at that, guys. I mean, if you're Christian, the Word of God is full of edification, rebuking, learning for everyone who reads it. Israel refuses to listen to God. So this is Israel, not not Islam. This is referring to deaf people listen to me, blind people look and see. In all the world, no one is more blind than my servant. No one is more deaf than my messenger. I think this is talking about spiritual. But, you know, again, um, well, was Muhammad blind and deaf? Maybe, I don't know. No one is more blind than my chosen people. But it's talking about Israel, remember. The servant of the Lord, my people see that they should do, but they do not obey me. They can hear with their ears, but they refuse to listen to me. Lord wants them to do what is right. He wants them to honor his wonderful teachings. But look at his people. Others have defeated them and stolen from them. The young men are afraid. They are locked in prisons. People have taken advantage of them and there is no one to protect them. Others take their money and there is no one to say give it back. Well, certainly Muhammad protected these um, worldly possessions, I would say, very well. So this is definitely not speaking about Muhammad in that, in that verse. Will any of you pay attention to this warning? Will you ever learn to listen? Who let Jacob be defeated? Who let others take what belonged to Israel? The Lord allowed them to do this. We sinned against him, so he let people take away our wealth. Yes, could certainly be referring to Islam and Muhammad, who, who certainly stole a lot of things from Christians and Jews and killed a lot, took many captive. So this could be speaking about Muhammad in this verse. The people did not want to live the way he, he wanted. They refused to listen to his teaching. So he poured out his anger on them and brought wars against them. And so again, um, who's fought against Israel? Who's fought against Christians and Jews? Yes, Islam has done that consistently since its conception. It was as if there were fires all around them, but they didn't know what was happening. It was as if they were burning, but they didn't try to understand. You know, all the fires in California there, um, people's houses being destroyed, I think Paris Hilton and uh, I think Rupert Murdoch's house was also damaged or destroyed. A lot of very rich people in the earth um, being destroyed. There's nothing to do with Islam unless it was a Muslim going into the woods and causing that to happen, but 
many people speculate it could have been some sort of a weapons which caused that but then again you know the the conditions were perfect for that fire to happen so you got to understand nothing happens without God's knowledge um, it does say in the Bible that um, if there is evil in a city you know God has, has caused it or there's good or, or there's evil whatever it is God has, has, has commanded it or allowed it to happen um, usually for the rebuke of his people because they are straying with idols as this verse suggests and uh, well you could say that Islam is probably you could you could fit it in uh, around these latter verses but I definitely say the first part of Isaiah 42 is referring to the Messiah of the world the Messiah of Israel and the Messiah of the entire world so that is my commentary on Isaiah 42 any questions any um, comments you want to make feel free thanks for listening may the Lord bless you